man, the myth, the legend. Uh, Alex, also known as Rex St. Pierre of Barbarian Braid. This is going to be a fun night. I've been looking forward to this one for a while. So um, first question of the evening what is the Alex versus Rex St. Pierre? Is this like a pseudonym? Is this like a Batman thing? Like, uh, what what's going on here? That's a uh, fantastic question. <laughs> so I went to school with a girl who's now, who for last year, whatever, was the highest ranking person in Canada in HR for for the uh, Red Cross. Hmm. So, highest ranking person HR-wise in Canada for the Red Cross. I'm 40, right? So, she, she um, when she graduated university, she went straight to Alberta, which is where the big money was for English-speaking Quebecers. And in Alberta, she worked in HR, and climbed her way up the ladder in HR and became a headhunter. And when she was in Alberta, I, side note, I'm really good friends with her. And I knew her very well. And she knew me very well. We won class flirts together in high school. There's a picture of us like her hanging off me uh, in the stairs in high school. Because we won. she won girl class flirt and I won guy class flirt. And yes, <laughs> we did flirt with each other for basically five years, right? So very pretty girl. Uh, Curly hair, beautiful blue eyes, perfectly bilingual, um, super well-spoken, always smiling, just uh, very, very charismatic. So it doesn't surprise me that she climbed her way up the ladder because she was uh, she's a hammer of a person. So at some point in university, and uh, Facebook came out when I was in university, right? Like Facebook came out when I was first year of bishops. Bishop's University was voted number one on Dave Letterman's top 10 list of places to party on Halloween. So at <laughs> Bishop's, you drank six days a week. You did not drink Sunday night, but you drank every other night, right? And I remember uh, uh, one, of our, one of my accounting teachers got really mad at us one day because he was not from Bishop's. He was from another university. He's like, you guys are ridiculous. You drink six days a week. You only do homework on Sunday night. You're goddamn degenerates. Anyways, <laughs> so Facebook came out the year I started university. So you know how Facebook was hot or not for university? And then in, by 2003 or whatever, it was available only to university students with a uni university email. Um, oh. I don't remember that because when you're, you're Facebook too young. came out, I was, I was like maybe a freshman or a sophomore in high school yeah, when it came out and young. like i didn't even have like a smartphone or, or really a personal computer we were kind of in the stone age yeah. back uh where i was from and at a, that a couple of years later everybody could have facebook right but those mm -hmm. years you needed a university so basically facebook was let's put pictures of us in university double fisting with no shirt on and sometimes no pants on sure so okay every one of my pictures were shirtless and like no shirt movie. <laughs> and every one of my pictures was like bottles of booze, <laughs> two beers. And by the way, this, this is sparkly water. Right. So, so the, I, I'm like, Oh, how's it going? I'm like, um, is there a job for me out there? She basically, and I said it jokingly, I didn't say, get me a job. You owe me a favor or anything like that. I was just, I was just chatting, seeing how she was doing. And she's like, I would not hire you. I wouldn't touch you with a 10 foot pole. I would hire you if they paid me double what I usually charge. I'm like, what? And she said it in like a cruel way, right? She said it was mean. <laughs> she had never been this mean to me before. And I was like, what? She's like, Alex, she's like, look at your goddamn Facebook. She's like, you look like, uh, you, you look like the worst possible person we could hire. I'm like, just because you part in university doesn't make you a bad person. But I guess f from her work experience, perhaps that is a, a correlation, right? Perhaps it, it, it does happen that you party like that. You're not a good employee. Uh, so I said, oh, yeah. I said, you will never find Alex Boutte on Facebook again. So I changed my name to my porn star name. My porn star <laughs> name is the name of my first pet and the street I grew up on. My first pet was Rex, a German shepherd. And the first street I grew up on, the first street I grew up on was St. Pierre. So my porn star name is Rex St. Pierre. 
It's actually a fantastic goddamn name. And it was the same time as George was climbing the ladder. So nobody ever asked a question. Everybody's like, oh. And then conveniently, Rex was one of the best one-liners to, to, to move in on a girl or a group of girls. Think about this. Picture this. Here I am at a party with two beers. I see five girls at a festival. I'm not even at Vicious. I'm like somewhere else. Festival. I see five girls. They're all good looking. And there's no men. I'm like, interesting. I walk up to them. I'm like, hi, girls. My name's Rex, like a dog. And they all, there's going to be five of them. One of them's going to look and chuckle. That's the one. That's the one, right? That's the <laughs> one that I, I've already got the bag kind of thing. <laughs> Two of them will be dismissive. Doesn't matter. Let's see. Let's see if we can get them to chuckle within the next three lines, right? But um, the one that chuckles right off the bat with that line, is sometimes there's three that chuckle. Then it's like, which one's going to chuckle to this next stupid one liner, right? So, so Rex St. Pierre <laughs> ended up uh, being a, a useful pseudonym, and uh, it suited me, and um, and it 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 brought good things into my life, oddly enough. And I ended up working for the government. So the government did look up my Facebook and never found me, right? Sure. <laughs> or I have a fake Facebook now, Alex Boutte with the 10 pictures from eight years ago, but mm -hmm. it's not. And now my Facebook's been cleaned up. I deleted all those pictures. If you look far enough, you'll see some silly stuff, but none of this shirtless, pantless, uh, <laughs> none of these videos of getting shots in the nuts and, and, and double fisting and just passed out. And I was never, I, there, there might not have been pictures of me with like puke all over myself because I wasn't a puker, but there were certainly pictures of me just nothing, there was nothing good going on in that picture, right? Like you could tell like, that's just debauchery. That's just bad. Yeah. Rex St. Pierre. It's my porn star name. So, so Matt, what's your porn star name? You're going to tell me like Princess, uh, Princess Dude. Consuela? No, it would be uh, it would be Rex Stagecoach, actually. You're Rex too. Yeah, Stage our first, Stage our first that's, was, that's not was bad. Rex. Mm -hmm. That's not bad. Yeah. We're we're a different era of Rex. Yeah, for sure. Stagecoach. Ah, well, I, that... I, I, I stole it first. <laughs> <laughs> well, that uh, explains a lot of things. It makes a lot more sense to me now as to where, as like when I when I talk about oh I'm getting line from from Rex and people would be like who. Even, no. like, the Canadians would be like, who? And I'd be like, oh, Alex, yeah. And I was just confused for the longest time about that. So, anyway, like, um, as far as, like, the line goes, like, how did you get into the industry? You said you worked for the government. Um, you had to, like, clean up your, your Facebook and your <laughs> act a little bit. So, like, how did um, you get uh, into the fishing side of things after all of those things, I guess? Well, I, I started... Like I started musky fishing, like I started fishing when I was like two. My earliest memory that I can think of is my dad carrying me across the river, right? Because I couldn't walk across the river by myself. So I could fish for as long, I, I've been fishing for as long as I could remember. And I'm a, a trout fisherman by, by nature. But uh, I moved to Ottawa from Sherbrooke for work. And in Ottawa, uh, there's muskies and there's a lot of muskies and there's big muskies. So I went from fishing other stuff to not caring and making the best of uh, trophy fishery, which, as we both know, is a, a blessing, right? Uh, not every totally. body of water is a trophy fishery. So if you have one, you know, don't miss out on the opportunity. And uh, I started off like everybody else, clueless. I started off from the bank, then from a kayak. I started off with a Shimano Corvallis and exploded it. And then I bought a um, Daiwa Luna, which is the equivalent of a Calcutta B, like a, just a, a, a much better quality reel. Mm -hmm. And then I moved into the Lexas and moved into the nine foot rods and all this other business and bought a boat. Um, my first boat was, I remember, there's a guy at work. He said, uh, he said, Alex, I said, I can't afford a boat. He said, Alex, he said, you go fishing four days a week. If anybody can afford a boat, it's you. You, <laughs> you, you live in it. And, and he was right because back then the price of boats was nothing. So I could have bought like this 18 footer with 115 horsepower on it for, for like 17 grand. Now they're 30, right? So, it, it, right. so, so he was right. I should have listened to him. I should have had a beautiful boat right off the bat. Instead, I bought a tin boat with a steering wheel, but I caught a lot of fish out of that goddamn boat. So when I got the boat, my musky fishing kind of went like this. 
Mm -hmm. And I, I, so I spent like a year and a half, two years grinding it out. I'm not a stupid person and I, I don't like wasting my time and I'm very results oriented. So I listened when people talked, I listened and I picked up a few clues and I, I picked up on uh, three fish day, you know, the patterns on three fish days and what fish like and don't like and what fish hate. Mm -hmm. and, and I picked up on, uh, on uh, people that are fooled by coincidence, right? Only black baits sure. work. Yeah, but do you use any other baits and black baits? No. Well, that's why only black baits work. O only marabou exactly. works. Well, do you ever cast anything else in marabou? No. That's why only marabou works. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, when, when I started catching fish, I was on uh, Instagram. And that's when Instagram influencers were like a hot thing, right? And sure. I went from uh, two, 3,000 followers to 10,000 to 15,000 to 20,000 followers. And then people were noticing. And I was becoming a much better fisherman. And I had a knack for pictures and I carried a GoPro everywhere and I was good at GoPro angles and um, GoPro edits. So every time a guy gets butthurt about a GoPro, I think about the money I used to get, get deposited into my PayPal account because of these silly videos I took with lampreys in my mouth that they were using in movies or in, in, in commercials and just giving me a, a stipend, right? I was like, yeah, you keep bitching about GoPros, buddy. Like, I'll keep using my GoPro. Now GoPros are basically obsolete because our phones can do that silly stuff. But Pretty much. And, and when I started um, taking these pictures on, on Instagram, I started meeting people. We, we notice each other, right? We, we notice, mm -hmm. oh, look at that guy's nice pictures. Look at that guy catching all those... Uh, those those salmon running up salmon and trout running up the, the tributaries, right? Look at this guy with his muskies. Look at the holy shit, that guy had a seven musky day. You you start it same thing for you guys in YouTube. Same thing. Mm -hmm. You start noticing, you start chatting to each other, you 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 invite each other to each other's houses, you realize it's a great, great dude. The guy puts you on a fish of a lifetime, right? For nothing, for for a mm -hmm. handshake and a case of beer, right? And then you sure. invite him and you put him on two muskies and then it, it's like this great, uh, great thing. But through that networking, I started working. I, it's basically through uh, Zach Bowalda that I got in touch with um, with Johnny Dadson. Zach, uh, you know Zach Bowalda? You must. The name sounds super familiar. So, so you, you, now that I said it, you'll see it everywhere. Mm -hmm. Zach Bowalda and Andrew Rideout are from Ontario. Mm -hmm. Andrew guides on Lake of the Woods. Zach has a cottage close to Lake of the Woods. Uh, the guys either played hockey with each other or guided one summer with each other, but they're really good friends. I think it's hockey and uh, great musky fishermen. And they won the musky cup uh, so many years back. Mm -hmm. Right. So I assume that's how Zach got in touch with Johnny through the musky cup. So, Zach goes, uh, Zach tells me, Alex, keep your mouth shut. Uh, Johnny's watching you. And you know how Johnny is, right? The mysterious, uh, the, the, the man yep. of mystery. So yep. uh, one day I had a three fish day with a Dadson nine millimeter. In hindsight, Johnny hates nine millimeters, which is the funniest thing. But anyways, a three <laughs> fish day with a nine millimeter. It was my three, my first three musky day ever. One of those muskies, I handed the rod to my brother, my younger brother, who never lived in Ottawa. He's four hours away. He doesn't fish muskies. And he got to reel in his first muskie and did a great job both side. It was any, I got him to cast blades all day. I made him earn it, right? So sure. um, that blade was given to me by Zach. It's funny how we're given a Datsun and it turns into like this entire crazy story. But uh, yeah, first time I ever had a three fish day. So, 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 so that. That, that was the holy grail to me. That, that blade was like uh, blessed. I went to one of my favorite 50 spots and I uh, hooked bottom with that fucking blade and I broke it off because my <laughs> trolling motor went bananas. You know, when your trolling motor does something you don't want it to do, it, it, yep. it's the most annoying thing ever. Snap me off and I just screamed. I spot locked it. I, I bought uh, a snorkeling gear good snorkeling gear. I went back two days later. I swear to God, Matt, this is how blessed this blade was. I, I filled it with the GoPro. Oh, my God. I, after I put the anchor down, I put the, you know what I mean? I, I looked at the, the, I looked at my, where I was on the, where I mapped it out, the spot on the map. And this is when putting a spot on your map was like new, like, like it, mm -hmm. it was a new, new Helix seven to me. It was, 
you know, uh, uh, or new to hummingbird anyways. So, so, uh, put the boat in place, put the, I never use the anchor, put the anchor down. I get in the water and the blade was between my fucking legs. I never, <laughs> have, I didn't have to die for it. I didn't have to look around and it, arguably like I shouldn't even have found it. Right. Because Dude. there was, it, at least there was four feet of water, but it was four feet of water with a really tricky bottom. So it, 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 it was, it was unreasonable for me to expect to find the blade, but it was right between my legs. So basically it looked fake. It looked like I got in the water and jumped. Well, actually I looked down, I saw the blade. I'm like, fuck, nice. I went back <laughs> down, grabbed the blade, pulled it out. So, so if you watch the whole video, you would have been like, it's fake. Cause he, but no, it wasn't fake. And Johnny I saw mean, that video. He wrote me a message. He said, uh, he said, um, um, what did he say? He fucking worded it funny. It's not good afternoon, sir. Or, uh, hello, my good sir. Something like that. How would you like to be, uh, um, uh, a Dadson pro staff, right. Or part of the Dadson family. And I'm like, I'd be honored. And then, uh, some baits came in the mail and, and, um, Johnny put me in touch with John Mortimer. And it, cause don't, don't, those blades were, <clears throat> kind of like when I started trolling and I started trolling and the fifties mm -hmm. started popping up and then it's like two fifties in a week and then everybody's watching. Right. And then, yeah. um, uh, I tell Johnny, I, I showed Johnny, I was making, I started making baits. I showed Johnny, Johnny didn't say a, out, a, out of niceness. He didn't make any negative comments. Right. Cause the first baits are always hideous. And uh, I said, I need a di deep diving crank. I need a deep diving crank. And then he goes, wait a minute. I'll talk to Mortimer. So Johnny spoke to John Mortimer, Johnny Dadson spoke to John Mortimer. John Mortimer reached out to me, saw the 50, two fifties in a week. You know, that, that's mm -hmm. only happened once actually it's happened a few times since, but not my two fifties alone in the boat. It's usually mm -hmm. me and another guy and we get one each, right? That's mm -hmm. how it usually works. Sure. Two fifties in the same week in the same three day stretch, but that was two fifties in a week alone in the boat, netting them. Well, that's another thing. Not too many guys fish alone. So I don't, maybe I have to ask Johnny. But he probably doesn't even remember. It, it, it's not that important to, to him in hindsight. Um, so John Mortimer sent me baits. And uh, all of a sudden, I started catching fish, trolling deep with giant cranks, right? That's the first one that Mortimer sent me. 10-inch uh, Kirby. And that nailed me a beautiful fish on the St. Lawrence with the sticks and stones guys. Again, right? Somebody I met networking through this influencer business. Totally. And I've had this conversation with you. This The influencer business, it's not about getting a free hat. It, it really isn't. And it's not even about getting nope. money because the nope. relationships I've built with people I love, the friends I've developed, through that influencer business far outweighs the gear, the money that, you know what I mean? The, the, it, the trips, oh, yeah. even, right. So, so, but the trips involve those people. So it's kind of hard that they, right. they, yeah, the, the, and, and to this day, those guys are great friends and Mortimer still warms my heart when he sends me a picture of a 50 pound <laughs> fish. He says, you're not allowed <laughs> to post this. And he said, the rope works, right? It's the most heartwarming. He says, your rope works. I'm like, John, I made you 150 pound. Use that one and say, he's like, no, 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 I'm sticking with the 90, 90 OG. I'm like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> but that, I can't blame him, right? His pattern is with 90 OG. The well, I mean, gangster 90 pounds. So he's going to stick to that. I, I know I can't get him away from that. So I mean, if he's used, uh, yeah. to, if he's used to that, you know, with yeah, he, diet curves and stuff, he, he, I, I get it. If he's used to that, he'd be stupid to change. I never, right. I will never get mad at someone for not wanting to try something new based on hard earned patterns. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so after that, I realized that th this was like four or five years in, right? After that, I realized, holy shit, I'm working with magnificent companies, magnificent gear. And I started getting caught. I started getting uh, picky. Like I, I would dress all in uh, merino wool and shit like that. Like I was comfortable all the time, best gear, best everything. And I, I, I uh, met a guy, Colin Campbell, and he basically, very high strung guy. I called him the goat. He's fucking crazy. He's going to die in the mountains of Alberta chasing uh, cutthroat trout in these canyons. He made me <laughs> climb down like 40 feet into a death canyon once. And he basically taunted me all the way down. He's like, come on, you pussy. You can't make it. Come on, you pussy. Rod in our mouth, rod in our mouth, climbing down into a canyon, right? And, and, 
And I climbed back up and I looked down and I'm like, you're going to die in that fucking canyon. And he just chuckled. <laughs> like, ah. That guy said, Alex, you're trying to catch a, a trophy of a lifetime. Don't fuck around with shitty gear. Don't don't use anything under the best you can get your hands up. Right. Right. Totally. So when he said that, it kind of well, that's why I like my dad's. That's why I like my my Mortimer's. That's you know what I mean. And then I'm like, mm-hmm. what's missing? Well, these this reel's decent. This rod's decent. What's missing? Line. Line is the weakest goddamn part of our recipe. I don't know what it was, but back then, I don't know if it's you're grabbing old line off of a, or you don't know how old the line is that you're grabbing off the counter at the, at the big retail store. Or sure. I don't know if there may be, there might have been a, a, a change in recipe of polyethylene, or I don't know if um, if maybe a political friction made it so that the manufacturers um, in Asia were sending garbage over here. You know what I mean? Like, and, totally. and, and I've lived through that. <clears throat> there is such a thing as being taken advantage of by a manufacturer overseas. The hardest part about importing stuff is developing the right relationship with the right person. We're back to relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Because you'll get robbed 20 times for every time you find that one guy. That one guy that is just absolute fucking money. And you ask him for something and you get always get a little bit more. You get something better, right? They exist. Mm -hmm. They're out there. But there's also a bunch of dudes out there in countries that are a lot less fortunate than us. That uh, will do anything for a thousand bucks, anything, right? That's not the guy you want to do business with. You want to do business with a guy that uh, that has a reputation to maintain, or, or mm-hmm. a family to feed, or you know what I mean? It, totally, it, it, it's tricky stuff. So, so lying just didn't cut it back then. I started screwing around. I started trying to find the manufacturers of these line companies, and eventually, I did find a few. And then I realized what the process was uh, of um, of finding the right manufacturer. I started asking, giving specs and asking for samples. And I got a lot of samples. And I would have never been able to do this if I had not sold my house uh, right before COVID in um, in uh, in Gatineau. So I, so I paid an unreasonably low amount for a house that was in front of a soup kitchen full of crackheads. Uh, that's given me a different attitude of homeless people since then. I used to have empathy. I don't anymore because they're dangerous, right? And and the safety of my family outweighs the empathy I have to feel for someone. But uh, I had a big chunk of money when I sold that house. And I thought, who better to invest that in than me? But I did it hesitantly, right? I, I did. Example. I, I knew what this cost to make, the gold. Mm-hmm. But I didn't dare um, invest in the money it took to get the gold made, right? So I started with the H strand instead of the 12 strand. So, so um, I took a chance after two years of fiddling with with uh, with these um, with these samples, right? Prototypes. Uh, I had a prototype that I loved. We had a great fall, great year, and great fall specifically. Like we had in in, in December, uh, late November or December is snow in snow. We had three, three fish days, which is unheard of kind of thing. Very few people oh, yeah. pull that off. And so I'm like, well, the line sure shit doesn't scare them away. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> and yeah. they were, they were these chunks. They were like, they, they were like uh, multiple 30 pounders, like these, the, you know, like it's fucking like 49 by, by 26, just these fat, fat fish. And I've learned since then that the date doesn't cut it. You need, you need water temps. You need, um, you need the, the, the weather and you need the water temps and the weather need to correspond with steady before and steady after. You know, like this cold cold fronts are an absolute are, are absolutely undeniable when it comes to fishing. You can't mm-hmm. you can't argue cold fronts. So so um, um, you know, super high waters or super low waters or tons of rain or no rain or super cold or no cold. All that variation really affects. 
that monster fishing at the end of the year. Hmm. So arguably, maybe we got lucky because I haven't been able to repeat that kind of fishing since we we had a re- very good year this year, but it wasn't a you know it wasn't uh, nine fish in three days, and they weren't uh, well, they were big, they were bigger than thirty pounds, but but mm-hmm. uh, it wasn't that many thirty pounds in a row. And for for me back then, that many thirty pounds in a row was uh, was magical. I don't know. Maybe I took yeah. it as a sign. So then I took a giant chunk of money, put it in the braid, and quickly realized that I wasn't the only guy looking for a tool that doesn't fail. So so um, I'm I'm not a salesman. I'm a tax accountant. Like <laughs> so, uh, you guys basically made made barbarian braid by saying, "Finally, somebody's listening. Finally, a musky guy making musky braid. Finally." Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Rope like rope like back in the nineties. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I think you you touch on some interesting things there as far as like compounding factors and dates and stuff. Like the date is just one part. You know, the weather's a part, water temp is a part, and those kinds of things. Like a couple of falls ago, I had an insane fall with just in like we just caught tons of fish. And last fall was good for sure, but like not insane. Like it was. But at the same time, every time the previous fall that we went out, we like just the way that the moon fell in relation to the weekends, the way that the weather pattern shaped up in relation to the weekends, it was like the juiciest of the juiciest conditions were lining up when I could fish, when I could be on the water. And like this, this year, it just wasn't quite the same. The moon phases were a little bit off. We had a lot more high skies and tougher days. That's not to say that we didn't catch fish. We caught tons of fish, but like it just... It, it was it was great. It just wasn't insane, and and that's really what it comes down to. So I can totally. Was it crazy you warm for you guys too? Um, two years ago. No, this year. This year was a warm fall, right? Um, this fall, yeah. I mean, kind of warmish, but like overall, the the summer was much more mild this year uh, than it was the previous year. The previous year, it got really hot really fast, and then it cooled off and then just kind of slowly sloped off whereas this year it was like starting to cool off and then it got hot again because there's like a couple of times where i was able to sneak out before that the water or like once the water temps cooled and then like it spiked again after it got hot again so then basically i got like two weeks towards the end of the summer which was great i you know caught some fish those kinds of things but then like back here but then we had really hot temps come through and then it's like, well, you know, we're done for two weeks. So then that, you know, you have this really finite fall window where things set up and the, you know, the stars align. And basically if the weather doesn't cooperate and it gets too hot and the water's too hot and you you just get, you know, you just get two weeks cut off of that pinnacle fall time. It's no one's fault or anyone's fault. Really. It's just how it is. And you can't do anything about it. Whereas like, again, relating it to the previous year we had that first cool down and then it just it stayed at a level where it was fishable and you could take advantage of that versus like oh we're gonna spike back up so then you know on top of that you have like two more weeks that you would have been able to fish previously versus you know this year i guess if that makes sense so yeah um well okay well you already answered my question about the the barbarian and and how that came about um my next question is can you talk about the tax man do you want to talk about the tax man you are the tax, tax man. man oh jesus yeah I can, but, so but you don't, I've, want to, I've, you don't want to i don't want you yeah, to reveal any I've, secrets. I've, uh, I've, I've i've been making baits since before mort i started working with mort right because i needed mm-hmm. something that dove deep and i needed bigger stuff that dove deep and i wasn't familiar enough with all these uh original gangster bait makers right like i i wasn't sure. i wasn't familiar with northern ontario and georgian bay and i was in ottawa i could probably ask the question to guys like john anderson he would help me out but uh <laughs> i'm like i'll just make my own bait right and mm-hmm. uh my dad did a lot of woodworking for a while so when i was a kid he had all the tools in the garage i was i i had enough skills to figure it out on my own and that was kind of pre-youtube also so i did have to do it on my own as opposed to sure. cracking youtube open and learning great learning tool uh yeah started fiddling and then uh kind of always fiddle a little bit just because after 
bringing the braid out, I was realizing that I wanted really specific tools for really specific locations at really specific times a year. And sometimes you know what tools work, but you know when that tool fails, right? So um, example, like uh, how many times has uh, um, a plastic bait blown up in a net? Right, so if a plastic bait that you love blows up in a net, you want to make the version of that bait that's tougher. Should mm -hmm. you use wood? Maybe not, right? But could you do it with resin? Yes. Or could you use it, do it wood with a lot of lead in it also? So there's like screwing around to do. But anyways, I was screwing around with baits and I I, I posted baits and uh, Johnny Dadson saw the bait. He's like, Alex, I want you to make me a, a big minnow bait. It's got to be between this and that, and this and that, and this and that. And all of a sudden, like three days there, I'm like, how's this look? He's like, holy shit. He's like, that's exactly what I wanted. He actually <laughs> said, I've been trying to get Mortimer to make me one of these for five years. And for some reason, Mortimer refuses to make minnow baits. I don't know why. Anyways, or he's got a few <laughs> to his name, but he rathers deep divers. And I understand why, partially why, because he makes great uh, deep diving crankbaits. He's, he, he's, he's, uh, he makes crazy efficient tools. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so... Uh, I painted it up the way Johnny wanted it with a with a spray can. Um, with it, the paint was just hideous. I sent it to him. Johnny casted it. He he basically wrote to me at the beginning of the season, and he's like, "Oh, look, I caught a I caught a, a forty pounder with your bait." He's like, "I guess you're gonna have to start selling baits." I'm like, "What?" He's like, "Yeah." He's like, "If your bait catches a forty pounder, you need to make more." <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, okay. So I uh, uh, bought a, an airbrush. I uh, made quite a few more blanks. I made quite a few more lips, uh, made quite a few more baits. I bought a bunch of uh, 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 toothaches, little plastic Johnson baits. Mm -hmm. And I learned how to paint on those by cheating, by using YouTube. It's amazing how much you can sh shorten the learning curve about how to use a, an airbrush when totally. you start painting 45 baits in a month and you cheat by using YouTube. And, uh, and then I, I uh, painted a bait and then Johnny's like, yeah, you absolutely have to sell that one. A few other people said that too. So then I decided <laughs> to, to try it out. I posted one and I did the, uh, I don't have one here. I did the silly ass thing of making it uh, two paint jobs. I called it the Taxman Two Face, mm -hmm. and uh, I the first post I made on the Barbarian page, kind of like the Barbarian Tough as Shit, the the, the page mm -hmm. that shows what's coming out before it comes out, was I showed one side of the bait. Everybody's like, "Wow, that's really nice," and then the next day I showed the other side of the bait. They're like, "Wow, that's really nice too. You gotta put put those up for sale." <laughs> and then I put it up, and and it was spinning on a spinner and you can see both sides and everybody's like, Holy shit. That yeah, is cool. I, so, I, I, I was a little confused by the two, the first two face <laughs> that I saw. I was like, what is going on here? And like, to, to he be just honest, posted this bait was, the other day, but then he's only got a, he's got an auction or a raffle up for one bait, but he posted two baits. And then like, I saw, <laughs> I saw the video of the, and I was like, Oh, oh I'm just it, dumb. But that's it, it, it was kind of, uh, <laughs> it was kind of like, uh, it was an insurance plan. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If the bait doesn't sell, I'll blame it on my paint job because it was because <laughs> I'm a silly bastard. Truth is, though, I own some of those two face baits and fish some of those two face baits. And on some day, I'm more comfortable fishing those two face baits than one face baits because mm -hmm. in some trolling passes, you're going one way and then you're coming right back, right? Or you're driving oh, in a circle, sure. you're turning around, driving in a circle. So you're basically showing the weed line a different color. So it's 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 like running That's two different point. baits, especially if you know that your bait gets bit. If you know the mm -hmm. the rattles, the 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 the, the, the yeah. if you know the shake is right, then then uh, you know uh, you know you've got you've got one uh, one thing covered out of two. The other thing's the color. On a bad day. They like color on a bad day. Anyways, so yeah, that's what got the tax man going. And then people oddly loved it or or assuredly loved it. I didn't realize I was giving people what they wanted again, right? So so then um, totally. 
I started making a couple more and, and I realized I was a lot better at paint than I would have ever expected to be. And uh, it's hard work though. I can't say I always enjoy the paint as much as I enjoy testing rods, testing line, testing, sure. building tools. Creating tools is more fun than, than, uh, than perfecting a tool for distribution, right? And yeah. uh, like this thing here, I put an hour on the head. And when I saw the clock, I've got three kids. I can't afford to spend an hour painting a face. All you guys see is brown and gold. And that's copper, actually. That's all you guys see, right? I took an hour. Because <laughs> there's, um, there's, there's white, there's pearl white, there's gold, there's copper, and there's mixed brown. Because the goal was to give the face of a carp that has the gill plate and then kind of a, just an indent in front of its eye. And I still mm -hmm. look at that and go, I wish I would have had a smaller, beadier eye more to the front like a carp head, right? So I sure. look at that and I say, I could have done better. I could have done better. I could have done better. Uh, I did quite well on yours, but yours was hell also. Yours <laughs> is many, There's many, a... many layers of paint. There's a lot of uh, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot going on there that is really impossible to capture in a photo. I did my absolute best. Um, there's I like six I colors in the, the fin, and the the six colors in the fin is not intentional. The six colors in the fin is like I think uh, I learned that from Adam Mueller from Top Line, and also probably from from Fretholt Bates. Mm -hmm. The guys, they, 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 they put, they layer paint and then they get what they want. So they start having a taste for what they want, like a palette for, for their paint. That, so, so you, you can't just put gold on brown and expect gold, right? You need sure. to put a lighter color underneath and then put the darker color on top. And then you, you, a, a brown on a yellow will not be the same as the same brown on a white or will not be the same as the same brown on brown. That's why the guys end up layering three, four times because they layer until they get the color they want. I'm starting to get that knack. And I developed mm -hmm. that knack on your bait because the face and the fin has like seven different colors. And it's all, uh, they're all lighter colors as well as uh, blues, purples, and silver uh, pearl colors. So I'm talking gibberish to all you guys, but it's me fighting myself in my head to get to get the color I want on a bait. <laughs> I'm going to have, I'm going to have lots of tools on any Cisco Lake now um, in the fall between the tax man, Bucko. I, it's not out yet. I, I'm going to kind of wait to publish yeah, that. Show me I, that. <clears throat> I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it because it's such a cool bait. Um, but like he sent me a 14 inch Cisco pattern one. That's Give me a second. Give me a second. Absolutely fire. But then between that and then the, uh, the bam bams as well and just like there's a lot of good cisco options that will be available this fall um so yeah i don't know where alex went he just he's running away he's grabbing something fast god damn it i failed you guys so uh -oh. i was running to my office where i hang my 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 like pretty baits or my close to my heart baits and the reason I couldn't find the bait I was looking for because it's in my goddamn tackle box. So <laughs> well, that's it, probably it's my favorite bait. For it. It, Fourteen inch second version um, of Bucko's Diving Rise, and it's mm -hmm. like a Wonder Bread, but it's basically just glitter white. And when he sent me that, he's like, oh, "I sent you a free color. I hope you like it." Right? I'm surprising you. When I opened the box, I'm like, "Holy crap! That's perfect for the Ottawa." The Ottawa's. Mm -hmm. Uh, completely full of moon eye. They're a big silver oh. palette. So, yeah. so the 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 um, shiners school up. The moon eye eat the shiners. The musky eat the moon eye. It's silver everywhere, right? But uh, now I'm excited to see yours. But you're not going to show us until you're. Uh... No, I'll, I'll save that one for the drop. I showed. I sh I've shown the one with eyes. I also don't have it with me right now. They're in Close my enough. basement. Yeah, I, I, it would take me a second to go down and grab them, but. Yeah, that one looks really good. The Bam Bams look really good. Just like so many good Cisco options. So I know I know Regan is close enough. I'm an hour closer to Regan now, and I'm hoping that, uh, you know, maybe this fall we can get on some, some Cisco stuff um, at the very least. I plan on chucking your bait before that, but, like, 
just having those options and just knowing how close it is to that forage. I don't know. I know that some people, they, they like to do like the really bright thing and just like, I want to draw their attention in like your Pete Bosselman's. And I've talked to other guys uh, who have the same kind of vibe there, but um, I always kind of key in on the natural side of things, which I, I, I understand both sides of it and maybe it's just one of those things where it's a self-fulfilling prophecy like you were talking about before where i feel more comfortable throwing more natural things and natural colored water so then i catch more fish on natural yeah, colors yeah, yeah, so yeah. then i buy yeah. more natural colors and catch yeah. fish on natural colors yeah. so but at the same time um, i like having those patterns that are close to the natural forage whether it matters or not i don't know i mean like i i've made a point to talk about this before and just keep forgetting but like you know, if you ever like see the sucky discs and then like there's a video on YouTube of this guy who's got like this xylophone looking thing and it's got all the colors of the rainbow and then some and they sink it and it's like they have a, a depth counter. So as it gets deeper and deeper, those colors change. So basically, my point is that the color that we see is not the same as the color that the fish sees anyway. So basically, like as much as I'd like to think that color matters, it's probably just all in my head, to be honest. And that's operating under the assumption that the rods and the cones in the muskie's eyes are the same as the rods and the cones in our eyes. Anyway, that's a Which they likely are not. rabbit hole. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> um, it, yeah. And it, I, color doesn't matter until it matters kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I would agree with that. It, 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 um, I, I, I learned muskies on the Ottawa and you're, you're fishing in a cup of tea, right? The, 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 the fish are blind and dumb there, period. So it doesn't matter what color you're fishing with there, but you know, that three fish day was on, uh, was on a, um, Kimbo turned into a Jack Burns. So, so it was black nickel turned into nickel from rub. So, so what do you think I like casting it on the Ottawa? It's going to be a black skirt and sometimes I'll go, um, fluorescent, but you know, I'll often go back to just the, a nickel plated blade or, or a black nickel plated blade. Yeah. yeah. That totally makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely times where it seems like certain color variations just, I don't know. They just have kind of a, a vibe and i don't know if it's because i don't experiment enough outside of it because i've found success on those but like here in the fall like stuff that stands out versus you know kind of your chartreuses or your oranges tend to do better once you get that algae stain in the water in the fall here uh, versus like just something that's opaque like a black or you know a white i've had more luck on some of those colors that tend to stand out and i don't know if that's the thing where they're just like coming in and they're just able to maybe hone in on that better because of the the loudness of the color or like in northern wisconsin i throw a lot of like golds and and like pearls and those kinds of things um and i don't know if that's a forage thing or if it's just like I don't know. But then again, I've had luck on, on other stuff up there too. So I don't know. I just kind of try and match the color to the color of the water. It's not a, it's not a great thing. I, I don't know. It's probably just confidence and whatever do you, you like is going to work. Do you have exact patterns? Um, Like, what do you mean? Like, so the, I would say the first time, I nailed a pattern, nailed, nailed down a pattern was the first year I got my first boat and I bought the boat and I was scared shitless. And then I went fishing the first day and I caught uh, four muskies that day and I lost two, which was kind of like unheard of for me. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, holy shit, like maybe this will work out. That's how hopeless I was kind of thing. What kind of mistake <laughs> did I just do or what did I get myself into? And I showed up at the boat launch at the, I didn't even, I didn't even fish till dark. I, I showed up at daybreak and, and fished all day. And that day they only ate uh, in the majors and minors I, to, on, on like within 10 minutes, like oh, every, all the four yeah. fish were, took, yeah, or within yeah. 30 minutes. Like, so I was getting two fish for every, every uh, moon phase. Um, I showed up the launch and they're like, oh, you're musky fishing. I'm like, uh, um, you're, you're, you're how how'd the fishing go? Okay. Um, what were you fishing? 
musky and I didn't want to talk. Right. And sure. they're like, uh, Oh, did you catch some? I'm like, yeah. They're like, how many? I'm like four. They're like, you caught four muskies. And then I'm like, <laughs> Fuck, I talk too much. Right. And then I basically, yeah, yeah. It was a good day. I got lucky and I got the hell out of there. Uh, that week I just kept catching them. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and I realized that the fish are eating a specific type of bait and a specific color. And if I keep doing that religiously on opener, I'll keep getting three fish days. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and three fish days is guide level or, or even the guys sure. are looking at you going, what the fuck are you doing? And in fact, yep. I, I, I made the mistake of telling a guy this and the next year he was literally, I, I showed up and he was there. So, mm -hmm. so it was, I don't know if he did it subconsciously or consciously, but I showed up and I was like, God damn, it, now I got to go pull this off somewhere else. And I did go pull it off somewhere else. So I always, I, I, kept, I keep saying this and it's directly counter to what I said, being fooled by coincidence. If you, if you get one bite, it's luck. Uh, no, um, if you get two bites, it's a clue. If you get three bites, it's a pattern, right? Sure. So, yeah. so, so it's either the action, it's either the bait, it's either the rattle, it's either the the noise, um, it's either the wobble, it's either the trolling speed, it's the depth, it's the weed line, or it's mm -hmm. the color. But the color always is further down the line than than, than these other things. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And yeah, I've got my favorite baits based on three fish days where they ate the same damn bait three times in a row. Or we had we were pulling three baits and they only ate a bait of that color or they only ate a bait at that depth or they only ate a bait when we were going that speed or at that time of day or so yeah, they and and um the guys I fish was kind of swear by it because I'm like, uh, okay, we're doing this because of this. And, and then, and then we, we, we end up having a lot of success. Yeah. I, I would say like, as far as color goes, like the one color that I think of that I've had luck in like 20 foot of visibility and like less than a foot of visibility is the, uh, it's Matt Ridgeway's, um, it's his gold perch color. It's kind of like white with some gold and it just stands out really well in you like, told me water. you told me to take that color i've got one yeah. of those hanging on the wall too yeah you yeah. should uh, yeah i'm glad that you did because that like i don't i don't know what it is about that color it works everywhere it works in any clarity and again it's it could just be a confidence thing like i've i've caught a really like my biggest fish on one of his baits was actually with the the um it was the gold carp that he calls it it's basically like all gold black bars orange belly um and that I got a I got a forty eight in Iowa on that a couple of falls ago, and that's I think my biggest on one of his baits so far. Probably not the heaviest though. the The one that I caught in Canada on that gold perch is probably the close to, if not the heaviest, that I've gotten on one of his baits. I can't think of one that would be fatter than that that I've gotten on one of his. Because um, I was about the same build as that forty five and a half I got in Northern Wisconsin, but it was longer. So anyway, um, but yeah, I like. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I, I agree with you though. Like you've got fluke, coincidence, and pattern as far as bites go related to yeah. fish and and those kinds of things. And I I don't want to backtrack too much, but like you were talking about the Dadson and and your nine millimeter, and that's kind of like I have a very similar story with the blade with no name. Fortunately, I haven't lost that one yet, but it was just like one of those things where you know Glenn was doing one of his like giveaway things, so I happened into one of them. I was like, holy crap, I'm spending this much money on this blade. Like, what the what the hell am I doing? And like I, I like to the point where you're hesitant to even like tie that thing on and chuck it around. But then the first time out with it, you know, I'm fishing through this area that I know that there's fish with a different bucktail. And I fish through with the bucktail. I get one to like come up after it and it's you know, it, it kind of plays in the eight but doesn't really do much and then you know, three casts later, um, you know, I, I put on, I put on the, the blade with no name. Cause I'm just like, well, screw it. Like I know there's fish here. Let's give it a shot. And three casts later, I catch my biggest Iowa muskie, like a 48 incher that was just, just super, super thick. And it's like, it's like, there's gotta be something to it. I just, I fished through this area like three times and this fish didn't even show itself. And then, 
you know, I go around one turn in the eight and it eats the freaking blade with no name to the leader. Like, uh, that, it's just crazy. The, the fish doesn't lie. The fish doesn't lie. No, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was kind of my foray into the Dadsons. And I was like, it's like the, the people people who, I, I tell people this all the time with the Dadsons, that they're like, how can a, a blade be that different? I'm just like, you just got to throw one. And I'm like anyone anyone who says anyone who says that there isn't something to it is either mad that they can't get one, hasn't thrown one, or is too stupid to realize that something can be different. And that may sound harsh, but at this point, I don't um, really care. Think about, sometimes it's all three. Honestly, <laughs> I'll, 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 I, I, I've seen I've seen what Johnny does to a blade, and. Uh, Think about, here's, that's all I'm going to say. Are you familiar with, with tuning crankbaits? You don't troll that much, but you have trolled. No, I have trolled, yeah. I don't so, I don't tune crankbaits all that much, no. So, but, like, okay. if something's running weird, I'll change it so that it's not. You see that there? Mm -hmm. Where it sits, it's going to run perfectly. If I bend that a sixteenth of an inch, this bait is useless. So mm -hmm. think about all the shit you can bend on a goddamn bucktail. Yeah, that's a fair that, point. That that's one of the main differences, right? It, it's it's um, yeah, you, you, you need to know your tools, and uh, it's the right components, and then it's there's there's a there's an artistry to it. There's components, and then there's just knowing how to put the components together and then, you know, fuck around with the components till they do what they, what you want. It's, it's not, mm -hmm. it's not a same thing with, uh, with crank baits or jerk baits or twitch baits. It's not about putting a piece of plastic and gluing it to a piece of wood. There's a lot more to it than that. <laughs> right. Exactly. And, and, uh, there's, you know, there's some baits that don't catch any fish that look beautiful, just amazing. And mm -hmm. there's some baits that look like nothing and catch 40 pounder after 40 pounder after 40 pounder and then 50 pounders. And yeah. you know, it, so some baits just have what it takes and we don't know what muskies want. We, we have an idea, but we don't goddamn know. Do they want, well, uh, they want the mm -hmm. sound of a hook hitting a, a, an aluminum blade. Do they want the sound of a hook rubbing a plastic belly? rubbing a wood belly they want the sound of a rattle inside a wood bait we don't have a clue what the hell they want and they probably don't even know what they want they just react instinctively and eat oh yeah and maybe that's why the bucktail became so popular in the first place Th those big blades brrr, caused something for the fish that was mm -hmm. like uh impossible for them to fight right probably that right just the uh, inline spinners are, are the the highest catching Highest big fish catching bait ever made, probably for muskies. Mm -hmm. The rubbers are in there, but there's so many goddamn different rubbers. Suix have caught a lot of fish, right? The, the old diving right. rise has caught a lot of fish, but I think uh, the inline spinner gets the size, gets the size, and uh, it, it, yeah, gets the 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 just the uh, dominates, gets gets the number one position. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's one of those things, too, where not all baits, I don't think, are created equal, even if they're made by the same person. Like, for example, like that one Ridgeway I have has over 30 fish on it. I don't know. I don't know how many over 30. It's it's somewhere between 30 and 35. I'd have to add them all up. But, like, it's got a ton. And that was the first 10 incher I bought from him. And the first year that I had it, I got two over 45 on it and they just like basically their teeth were just big enough that they're able to you, rip the epoxy you need to start off comparing it with all your other ones you need to I like suppose that's true yeah you need you need to start but, uh, really or, or let matt <laughs> take a look or something right or yeah. don't let matt take a look <laughs> <laughs> well he was like I, I told him that the the fish i got so many good fish on it that they're ripping the epoxy off and the paint's coming off and he's like oh, i'll just send you another one i was like no no no, no that's not a good idea one, and it's not a good idea for you to fix it either like <laughs> just oh, wait wait no, a little just, bit wait till it stops re working and then we'll think no, about it like we'll retire well, the it and was, then we'll yeah but you need to inspect was, that thing you need to take a really good look you're, you're right um the problem was it like 
it's already been repainted once. Like okay. that. The the problem was like the epoxy was peeling off so much that it was creating an issue with the way that the bait was tracking. So it was okay. like either I sent it back to him, he peels the epoxy off, repaints it, puts the epoxy back on and sends it back to me. Or I'm just going to have this bunk bait that's got, you know, at that time, I think it had like six fish on it. So, but now it's got a ton. <laughs> did, and I think uh, did he tell you that, because I don't know what kind of wood he uses. And it could be a wood that doesn't like water very much. Well, not, not sure. A wood that doesn't like water as, as much as cedar, for example. But um, sometimes you, you, you need a denser wood to make that bait. You can't just make any bait with cedar. Mm -hmm. That's not how that right. works. And then um, some baits get waterlogged and don't run like they should. Some baits get waterlogged and run better. I had a bait like that. Right. I had a bait that I had to wait for it to fill with water before it got bit. So I should have like kept it in a bucket of water at the house or whatever. It's the weirdest mm -hmm. thing. I've yeah. heard of people doing that with their. But yeah, you need before. to compare. You need to take a good look at that thing. If, is it a shorter lip, a longer lip? Is it a? Well, the problem is the problem is with that one more than anything else is, it's from 2021. So, okay. or maybe it was 2020. I don't know. I'd have to look at the year. Lexan or aluminum. Well, it's a Lexan, but the okay. problem was there was a time where he was making these and where he was sourcing his Lexan from, like they changed something with the way that the Lexan made. Because like, you know, in the past, bill breakage wasn't nearly as big of an issue for some of his baits as it has been in the recent recent years. Like I've had a couple failures, but nothing too crazy. Nothing that it was like, you know, we one beat of them. the shit out of these things, by the way, right? Like, well, you, yeah, you I mean, beat the yeah. crap out of a Twitch bait. You're banging it into everything oh, all yeah. the time. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is like, you can't expect it to be bulletproof. Like, for example, that one, that, that one I got the 48 on, I was fishing it all day. 48 came awesome, awesome lure, awesome bait. And then like towards the end of the day, I'm just like ripping it, twitching it. And I hit a log and the build just freaking cracks off. And it's like, well, what do you do? You know, what do you do about that? That's just shit luck and it, it happens. But it's not it's not a hammer that's supposed to whack logs. It's it's a bait. Right. right. Exactly. <laughs> and and the thing and I, and I think people need to be aware of that. And, and it sucks when that happens with baits that you like, but it just is what it is. But like anyway, back to my original point is there's something cha that changed between like, you know, with the manufacturing between that pre like the pre covid period and the covid period something wonky happened there and so like the the prospect of getting one that is about the same is is not it's not good i have one from that same era that i was letting ben stone borrow and i really hope that he brings it back to me cuz he said he didn't throw it that much last year and i really want it back you so... want it back now just because <laughs> it's 2019 <laughs> yeah, that's right i think that i think that that was the one I think that was the one that Matt sent me to like keep me tied over until he got the other okay, one okay. repainted. Until he fixed the other one. Yeah, and then I got the other one back, and yeah, pretty much from from like August until the middle of October, that thing lives rent free in my box. I know that eventually that bill will fail, like knock on wood that it doesn't. But like it's it's Lexan, like it's not bulletproof. Eventually, I'm gonna end up smoking a rock with it or or a stump. I mean, there's trees everywhere in our lakes down here. And the the worst part is, is like using it up North in like Wisconsin or Minnesota. Cause like those lakes are pretty much void of those things for the most part. It's mostly weeds that you fish, but every now and then you'll find like a dead head or a boulder that you didn't realize was there because you're so used to it being wide open and free that then you're just like twitching, twitching. And it's like, boom. And it's Bang. like, Holy crap. Where the heck did that thing come from? Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's hard sure. on the bottom end of a motor too. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, funny story is when I first got my boat, the first day or like the first time I took it out in, in Wisconsin, like this was the first week that I had it. And I was like, there is no feeling of freedom, like taking your boat out for the first time and throwing that thing on plane. But then I like, I cut this one spot just too much oh, on no. the shallow side and i freaking broke part of my prop off and this was like early on owning that boat like i had had it for maybe just the prop's days. not a big deal though it's no, a yeah. lesson learned yeah yeah i was just like because i didn't even think like 
it, I didn't hear anything or, or really, I, I thought that maybe the skag hit something, but no, I, I don't know where that rock came from. But then Callie's dad was like, yeah, you got to be careful cutting it on that side because there's stuff that comes up quick there. And I'm like, yeah, well, whatever. I have to whack one of them. <laughs> uh, <it's... laughs> I, I backed uh, into a rock uh, last year, two years ago or something, but it wasn't a full pin kind of thing. It was uh, going up the river to get to, to the launch here at the lake locally. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a bridge. So I had to hurry up, pull the rods out of the rod holders so that they wouldn't all break under the bridge. But when I did that, I dropped the rod in the water. And then when I dropped the rod in the water, I tried to back up to get the rod from the bottom and I backed into a rock. So basically I should have just broken all the rods and saved myself a shitload. And I lost the rod too, by the way. So I should have just saved myself all that trouble and just rubbed the, rubbed the bridge with a bunch of rods, (laughs) but lesson learned, right? You got to be, uh, you can't be impulsive with a with a boat and a, a big boat motor prop. You just gotta take your yep. time, breathe. Don't don't do any crazy things. Just throw throw it in neutral and count. Slow and steady. Yeah. Sometimes slow and steady. Move. Slow and steady. <laughs> Safety. What um? So uh, we talked a little bit about trolling and casting. What do you um? So so trolling versus cast. What are what are your thoughts on that? How do you decide what to do and when to do those things? I yeah. Uh... <laughs> Most <laughs> full disclosure. Am I half and half or yeah, most of my big fish are trolling. My biggest fish, like top three biggest fish are trolling. So that weighs on my opinion. Truth okay. is, I joke, I kid, because I'm usually poking fun at guys that say, Oh, I don't troll, it's for old guys, or I don't troll. I'm like, if you don't troll, you're not musky fishing. You gotta do both. You gotta learn both. You you don't know what you're mm-hmm. missing. You, you might be missing out on that three fish in an hour and 15 minutes, right? Because sure. that's what they want that day. You got to give them what they want. And alternatively, if they want me to cast a, a pounder, I'll cast a pounder. Like, I'm not going to like it, but I'll cast a pounder all day long. Right. Or I'll tell the guy in my boat, you cast a pounder and I'll cast whatever else you want me to cast or whatever else I think will work. So, um, I, I really am 50-50. I, I'm 50-50. Later in the fall, I do a lot more trolling than casting, but I, I was casting in January. That's mm-hmm. that, So like, I'll, if, 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 if we need to cast, we will cast. If we need to troll, we will troll. And um, second to last time I was casting in the dead of winter, uh, I, my buddy caught a, a 52 it was 40 pounds. We weighed it. It was a 50. We didn't girth it. We just weighed it. I pulled out the scale at 40 pounds. Yeah, you, guys, to winter. It, you guys have those Chatillion scales or whatever that you. That's not what we were using. What did I use that day? I had a, um, I had a, uh, I'm not, yeah, I don't have a, a, a chatty scale like they call it. I'm not trying to weigh a world record. I don't need my scale uh, adjusted be so that the world record counts. Like I, I I'm not going to catch a 58 pounder like fucking Cullen, right? Uh, that's not, that, those aren't the fish I'm chasing. Um, what what was that big one? What did because they weighed it for real like that fifty nine? Oh, yeah, what uh, did it actually weigh? It was uh, okay. Let me think here. It was fifty eight pounds. Yeah, that's and right. it was, was fifty nine inches. But it wasn't sixty. So yeah. So so it, so but let's be honest. Does it really matter? It wasn't sixty. But I mean, does, does it really matter? So it, it was five foot. I, I, I mean, I'm pretty I mean, sure it was fifty eight and something. Fifty eight and a half and fifty nine probably and hairs 59 inches and multiple guys were there there was i think it was two boats and like five guys they were all watching cullen's knee shake right giant Mm. cullen uh could deadlift 700 pounds his knees are shaking from excitement good for him that was a great fish dinosaur an absolute dinosaur insane insane fish i remember seeing those pics the first time online and like just the way that that fish looked in relation to the boat and it wasn't like it was a disproportionate shot or anything it was like an overhead shot or whatever and the fish was like half the length of the boat and it's similar to to scape's video when they're fishing in in the river the tributaries of green bay and he had that 53 and a half come up in that little like, in that yeah that little in the, uh, in the thinner, tin yeah. puddle jumper thing and it's like that fish is literally half the size of that boat My, like, uh, it's just insane my first People don't realize that, eh? But but if you catch 30s all week, 
a 40 will look like a 55. If you catch <laughs> yeah. 40s all week, a 50 will look like a 55. If you catch 50s all week, a 53 is another class of fish, right? Oh, yeah. And then a 56, yeah. I don't even, I can't even imagine what the fuck 59 is. Like, I, 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 I can't even imagine it. Like, it's, no. they, they, there's classes of fish, they, they go up significantly. My first 50 was a 52 incher. I didn't, uh, it, it, it was measured beside the boat with a, uh, I regret it because it probably would have measured out much longer than that on a bump board in a cradle. And the guy I was fishing with uh, uh, got real jealous real quick. Great fucking dude. But him and I used to get mad when we didn't both get fish, right? And to this day, and that fish had a clip tail. So to this day, I swear that fish was bigger than what it measured out at. It had 52 inches, no more teeth. An old, old, old female, old, old female. Mm -hmm. And I was in my uh, my 16 foot tin boat, and that thing compared to all the 38 inches we caught that week, right, 41 maybe. That thing mm -hmm. was the length of the boat. That thing was never ending. I was like, if sure. that's not a 50, I, I quit fishing, and it was, but I, it was lot could have been 48. It's because 48 still a beautiful fish compared to. To a high 30s fish mm -hmm. yeah no teeth no tail i wish i could go back in time uh that picture's <laughs> on my uh, i love that picture that, that I'll have to, had I'll a have great to that big one. bucket head like a five gallon bucket head giant head tiny my my hands look like tiny little doll hands in that fish's <laughs> gills yeah yeah you you make a good point there though like they they like as they age and size up they become literally different animals like those fish that are like mid 30s even like your upper 30s fish compared to your lower 30s fish are different your low 40s fish are different compared to your mid 40s fish and once you start getting into the upper 40s like that's a totally different animal that behaves in a totally different way than anything else down the spectrum. And that's not even like, I don't, I haven't had a ton of interactions with like fish over 50, but that's just, that's the water that I fish on. I mean, there's just not a lot of those fish here in Iowa. I was talking to a DNR guy talking about Midwest mutts and like, that's very true. But the problem is, is like, you know, with all these DNRs working together to try and make sure all their stocking and stuff is met and, I was loaning out fish to other places and other places are getting fish from here. And it's, you know, the, the problem is you got a lot of dilution within the genetics, not to mention you're sourcing those genetics from literally the same, you know, three lakes year in and year out. So then you have dilution on that side of things too. And that's not to say that those fish can't get to 50 inches. It's just a lot harder for them around here to make that happen. The, the genetics just aren't there. The history isn't there. Um, but like our top end is, is around 40. I sent you that picture of Barry's fish from last, uh, last week or two weeks ago, whatever it was, uh, just an incredible specimen. Like I wish, I, I really wish we would have girthed it for him just, just for posterity's it's sake. And but, giggles. Um, It'd be nice to get a weight and a girth on all of them. Weight's yeah. kind of tricky because it could have a, a stomach full of fish. Like a, a mm -hmm. fish could still look beautiful and just not weigh that much because it's not full of food. But, mm -hmm. uh, Full of food and full of eggs, it'll look fat and weigh a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that one was forty-eight by fat. I don't know. I don't know how fat or whatever, but like our our fish carry their weight pretty good. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to think of some of the ones like out of that lake. I girthed, um, I girthed the I girthed the forty-four just because it looked so fat a couple falls ago, and it was it had a twenty-two inch girth. I was like, what is this fish even doing? Ha. So even half the girth the length. that's cool it's just like ridiculous like you've got this fish that's basically pushing 30 pounds and it's not even 45 inches which is cool our fish don't get super long but they they carry their weight pretty darn well which is nice because when you you know like especially this time of year in the pre-spawn you get one that's pushing that four foot mark it's probably going to be in that 30 pound range which is super cool and there's not a lot of places that are like that that you can catch a four footer and be like, yeah, 30 pounder. So anyway, I don't know. I digress on, on the, the size of fish. I think I, people get too caught up in, in length and weight right, and all these right, things. Uh, you just got to judge it for their the... boat stats. They all count for boat stats and they all count for sure. learning purposes. Oh yeah. And, uh, and we're very blessed and lucky to be able to hold one. Because there's yeah, guys just, all over the world that look at us and think we're 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 the luckiest men on earth, and we are. We we, we are to be able to hold those things, right?
play and hold with them, play with them and hold them and catch them and release them. And yeah. And, yeah. I don't, uh, do you, do you turkey hunt um, yeah. over there? This is going to make sense. I promise I will tie this together, but my, my, I, I compare turkeys and muskies in similar ways. Like you, you cannot appreciate how big that animal is until you actually hold one. Like, turkeys or whatever like when they're doing weird shit like wandering down the road or whatever pecking at rocks and and filling their gizzard you know whatever but like until you get out in the field and you put one down and then you hold it and you're just like holy crap i've got to carry this freaking thing out of here canadian geese are kind of the same way too if you knock down like a big like greater canadian goose you're just like where did this airplane come from that, like <laughs> just spends most of its days harassing golfers or something yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah making, but, making messes everywhere yeah yeah I, but my point being is like it's hard for people like even in a picture to get an appreciation for how big those creatures are until you're you got one right there in front of you but i, I think that's kind of the beauty of being an outdoorsman generally speaking you get a, a front row seat to some of these things that like people just have no idea about um which is cool in a way and sad in a way for them, I suppose that, and I, I mean, it's probably the other thing philosophically that like musky fishing has done for me is like, it has made me realize that I have no room to judge anybody's hobbies. <laughs> like we, do, we, we do the weirdest shit on earth. Like we literally will spend all day fishing for fish that don't want to bite in the hopes of like, taking a picture with it and then chucking it over the side of the boat, not literally chucking it over the side of the boat, but releasing it. Well, <laughs> pulling one of these that we have to fight to get. <laughs> yeah. No, no kidding. And that's not even to talk about like the, the ridiculous nature of like bait acquisition and like uh, trying to get the edge on, on the guy, like just down the street from you. And it's like, okay. Oh, <laughs> I, I had a thought this week and it's a bad thought that there's a phrase it's got to be from an American president in the past. Uh, we all, men live lives of quiet desperation, right? So musky fishing is a, a, a is, is us kind of seeing the dim light through the desperation. We're, we're dreaming of greatness. We're dreaming of an achievement that is closely related to our primitive selves that needed to eat. Mm -hmm. And, um, it also allows us to, to be part of a tribe. We're, we're musky. Oh, guys, sure. Right. We, mm -hmm. so, so it's, it's, we're just trying, we're, we all live lives of quiet, desperate, quiet desperation. We're just trying to be happy. We're just trying to <laughs> totally. find us a small bit of satisfaction in this, uh, in this sad world. So we shut off the news, we jump in the boat and we just go where it's nice and quiet. And we're with nature. Uh, we're not actually after the fish we're, we're after something else right all all these i'm throwing out all these one-liners from from ex uh, uh american writers and or presidents <laughs> is it hemingway like, that said men don't know that when they're out fishing they're not actually out there for fish he didn't say it that way either uh yeah men men live their whole lives fishing uh oh wait how does it go uh oh men men live their whole or fish their whole lives not knowing that it's the fish that they're after I yeah think that was Hemingway. it's not the fish that they're after that's exactly right yeah mm -hmm. that's a great great quote it is fantastic yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I realized that like i don't have i don't have the leg to stand on to like judge someone who who unicycles for a hobby or perhaps dresses up as a clown or someone who maybe so, wants to so, go in the woods and, and fight swords with someone dressed as an elf i, I don't we, have... we judge right we judge and then our wives are like you must be fish you idiot and then we're like, oh yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I guess the the one thing that I've arrived at is like my hobby doesn't bother other people. Um, I, I guess that's like the one thing. Like if 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 your hobby, and now we're gonna get into like libertarian philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> if your hobby doesn't infringe on someone else's like <laughs> life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, then like you're you're good. It's a good hobby. Your hobby. It's a fair hobby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh God! Anyway, if your hobby gets I, in the way of traffic, not so fair. Just in the way. Spe speaking of Canadian geese and turkeys getting in the way of traffic, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um. So, um, what was I gonna? 
Oh, Ugly Pike. I, I meant to bring this up. So, Ugly, speaking of hobbies, this is like a perfect transition inadvertently. So, like, the Ugly Pike guys and you, you, you do the B, the Brazilian jiu-jitsu thing. Like, how does that relate to muskies? Like, uh, Frank talks about it all the time. I don't want to put words in his mouth. But you may be able to relate those things better than I can. And I think that there is a significant tie, but I don't do Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Um, yeah. So, uh, so what's the close? First of all, you got to be crazy to musky fish. You also have to be crazy to um, to do Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I won a tournament once. Uh, one of my first tournaments, second tournament I won. I won, two, I won two gold medals. I won two tournaments. I won the gi and the no gi, so kimono on, suit, and then like the equivalent of naked, you wear tights, like you see on TV, mm. the, the big okay. um, MMA, the like, big, like MMA, MMA, they're just yeah. wearing tights and fighting, but there's no punching in, in jiu-jitsu. On the ride home, I'm like, I'm kind of like, it's kind of surreal. I'm like, how the fuck did I like win? I'm like, and I'm like, I, and I, I'm like, Dom, I'm like, my, my jujitsu must not be that bad if I'm able to win the tournament. He said, he said, Alex, he said, you just beat, the, you just fought seven trained men. They've been training for two years like you. And you beat the shit out of all of them. He goes, I think you I just think about that. So, so. So I, I dominated seven men that trained for, 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 for two years. First of all, it takes, you got to be crazy to train for two years because you're basically getting the shit kicked at you for two years. You're beating people, but you're getting beat up a lot more because you're at the bottom of the ladder. Everybody mm -hmm. with more experience than you or more size, more athleticism or a combination of all three, they beat the brakes right off you every night. But jujitsu is meditative. When you're getting killed, it's not about winning or losing. When you're getting killed, you're not thinking about your bills. You're just thinking about surviving, which is something you and I don't feel anymore. Now we're comfortable on our couches and we scream at our TV and we go buy our frozen dinners. And we, we don't know what it's like to be to be primal or to be a caveman anymore. We've oh, forgotten. I'm glad, and, and we're I'm glad built you use that word. I'm going to I'm going to piggyback off that here in a second. I'm not going to interrupt your train of thought, though. We're built for that. We were we were we were savages for 1.3 million years. Probably before that, we're savage when we were on four feet. Also, then we stepped up on two feet, and all of a sudden we're civilized. We're not made for that. So, so all these weird anxieties that we feel nowadays, they're 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 likely purely based on the fact that we're not allowed to be us. Just straight up crazy savage. Let's be honest. At like the Middle Ages or or, or uh, actual barbarians <laughs> or actual <laughs> Viking times, right? Come, Getting come attacked by Vikings 400 years ago, five, six, seven, eight hundred years ago would not have been pleasant. We were absolute savages. But so so, and when you're winning, it's the same thing. You're not you're not like oh, I'm going to win soon. No, no, no. It's 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 about what do I do next? How do I stop him from getting the better of me? Right. So, so you got to be crazy to do juice and, and crazy to do. Uh, muskies you got to be crazy to invest enough time to become good at jujitsu you got to be crazy to invest enough time in muskies but ultimately when you're doing jujitsu you're doing you're being primal and when you're in the boat trying to outsmart a fish with your buddy you're hunting you're being primal too it's the weirdest mm -hmm. thing that why do we watch a, a hockey game or a football game or a basketball game and go Woo! it's because we're Jordan Peterson said this it's because we're watching our tribe member put an arrow inside the mastodon that's what we're watching when the ball goes through the hoop we're watching success that used to turn into food right there, there's mm -hmm. a reason why we like being in a team working in a team uh there's a reason sure. why hunting feels good fishing feels good there's a reason why axe throwing feels good it People that don't like hunting will still enjoy throwing an axe. Why? Because they're finally giving in mm -hmm. to the fact that they would love hunting if they came out with us for a weekend, right? Um, I, I think that's the link. And I started jujitsu because of Frank. I I met Frank through social media. Uh, I was on the podcast way back when, like the seventh guest, invited Frank to come fishing in Ottawa, caught four muskies in November, when you're supposed to catch zero, Frank thought I was the most magnificent fisherman in the world. He didn't realize I nailed that, that 
pattern with him. Oh, sorry, the weekend before, right? So mm -hmm. Frank luckily came to me on my second pattern that I had ever established in muskie fishing. Then we caught four muskies. The last one was a nice fat one. And we basically uh, talked about uh, a million different things because we're trolling for four days straight. And I asked him, I'm like, uh, can I start jujitsu? He's like, yeah, you can. Um, he's like, I'm not too old. He's like, no, you're not. And Frank's not only a good salesman, but he's good at selling people to come to his gym. And it's true. Sure. Jujitsu can work for everybody, but you can't be a chow chow. You need to be a lion, right? Like you can't be a pretend lion. You need to be a lion. You either like it or you don't. There's no in between kind of thing. And Frank said, um, said, uh, I said, what's impressive in jujitsu? How long does it take to, to get a blue belt? It's like about two years. He's like, well, you won't get your blue belt. You'll quit like everybody else. <laughs> and I'm like, what belt's the impressive one? He's like, purple belt's the impressive one. I'm like, good. And then six years later, I'm a purple belt. So I, 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 I tell that to Frank quite often. I'm like, wasn't I supposed to quit, Frank? Wasn't I supposed to quit? But alternatively, <laughs> I would have told Frank in the boat, there's no way to make money in musky fishing, right? And now Frank has an extremely successful podcast with sponsors that can benefit from his extremely successful podcast. And now I'm um, selling, selling uh, musky braid and I'm selling baits and I'm selling rods and I'm selling all kinds of shit based on my knowledge, my network and the knowledge of my network, right? If it wasn't for my network, none of this would happen. I need all these guys to do this mm -hmm. testing for me to, to tell me what's wrong. Tell me what to add. Tell me, tell me what they want. Right. I need to, I don't know if you've noticed all the polls I, I, all the polls I put up. Oh, I need everybody's yeah. opinion. I need your opinion. Is, I, yeah. I, 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 I need to know, I need everybody's uh, heartbeat. I, I need to know where everybody's at. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, they're both hard. They're both primal. Um, to be good at it is something special, right? Not too many people are good at it. Um, mm -hmm. When you're good at it, you impress people. There, there's a, an amount of respect that comes with it. Uh, the, the 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 good feelings are very 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 good. The the, the dopamine yeah. release in jujitsu, the the dopamine release is constant. In muskies, you're outside, so that feels good. It's good for us physically. Sure. Uh, vitamin D and just good air. But also, when you finally beat the fish, right? When, when you get that fish that we were looking for, or when you get those two fish when they were supposed to eat, or when you guys both get a 50 in two days, or uh, that's a very satisfying feeling. I, I, I came, I conquered, uh, and I left satisfied. I don't know if that's Josh Ketry's into that too. And I haven't met Josh face to face, but Josh and I are, are uh, the same person. Josh and Frank and I are, are, are very similar people. I'm just the younger of the three that doesn't own a jujitsu <laughs> gym. Those two guys own uh, jujitsu gyms. Yeah, that's that's really cool and super interesting. Also, like just being up there and having having that. I don't. I we don't really have an outlet like that down here. I mean, there's some places that have martial arts, but I would be I. I don't know if there is a jujitsu gym around here. I would have to do some research into that. I guess my primal drive gets uh, taken out on running and usually lifting weights some but like part of that is just like uh some of the fitness stuff is just like the endurance thing is just it's so critical to being on the water and having your head in the game also don't get me wrong like the the fringe benefit of that too is like i have the energy to chase my daughter around because she just like has just endless energy at this point in time so but i guess my point is like the things that I enjoy most in life right now require peak endurance, probably even more. And um, like, you know, running is, is good. I, I like how, you know, it, it, it heightens all your senses. You can smell better. You can see better. You hear better. You notice things that you wouldn't notice otherwise. Um, and I don't know if that's just like the, the, endorphins releasing from runner's high or if it's like actually taking place but then again you know you go on a pheasant hunt for five hours or four hours in the evening and you're just or you know from the afternoon into the evening and you know you look at your fitbit and you're like oh man we went five miles or whatever and it's just like oh, i'm good we feels can, like nothing you know i need to go i need to go like grab some mexican and like 
snarf down a burrito quick, but like, I, I'm good. I can keep going. Um, whereas like, even when I was lifting more, not really working on my cardio, I couldn't really do that. And yeah, I, I don't know. I think the endurance thing is, as I've aged is, is becoming a, a lot more critical. Cause like, there's always someone who can lift more than you in, in the gym. And like, eventually you reach your genetic peak and just what you're blessed with is what you got. And unless you want to take steroids, then you just got to be happy with your genetic Mexican potential. supplements, Mexican <laughs> supplements. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. It, uh, weightlifting changes your look more, right? Cardio yeah. will make you live longer. And if you don't use it, you lose it. So if you're doing any of it, you're, 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 it's better than doing nothing. Uh, oh, yeah. Doing all of it, God bless you. If you're, if you hate one of them and do the other again, much better than doing nothing. But sure. Uh, yeah. No, I'll never, I'll never judge someone that runs. That's for sure. Well, I used to, I used to do it more competitively. I actually did it for a couple of years in college, but that was a long time ago. And I Cross country? look, yeah, I look okay. very different now than I used to. I coach it in high school kids uh have had a good time this year we had a really good season it was a lot of fun um yeah um shoot i'm looking over my notes here with what i've got and trying to see i guess like the 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 couple questions that i've got left are like so what are what are your goals with barbarian i I know that that's a tough question i asked the same thing at thatcher last night when i was talking to him and it kind of caught him off guard so i know that that can be a tough question to answer off the cuff but like any goals for barbarian or what are, what, what is the end goal? What would be the, the ultimate goal for barbarian at the end of the end of the journey, I guess. I've thought, so yeah, you're, you're, yeah, that's, that's a good question. <laughs> so short term minimum one fancy product every year, minimal short term, right? This year it's the rod. So at the Odyssey, it's the trolling rod, the spear, barbarian spear, eight foot one piece trolling rod. That's the 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 goal. But I think it's going to be more than one product every Odyssey. Um, cool. I'd goal, imagine after the Odyssey, I, I only have so much time. So, so 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 sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I'd imagine after the Odyssey and and the hype around those with the Canadian fishing community, there probably won't be many of those left um after the odyssey itself they yeah and they've been uh, so well received that uh i think i'll get more made i'll get more made so they'll be a they'll just be available right cool and uh there, i only have so much time to make these so so, right. so i like the idea of carrying on with custom but I also realized that if I'm going to make more tools available, um, I'm going to have to move away from custom. So, mm. yeah, so a, a product every year. And uh, yeah, I thought about that. I, 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 I look at Joe Booker and I'm like, he's got 51 products on his website. That means mm-hmm. I need 52 products. <laughs> 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 so... Whenever I have a, 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 yeah, I don't know if I, like, I don't plan on Barbarian being around for two years. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't think it was going to go beyond Barbarian Braid, but now it's like, it's, it's like uh, beyond my control. It's like <laughs> a snowball. It just oh, keeps dude, rolling I... and rolling and rolling and, and people want more. So you know, like uh, the minute the trolling rod came out, people wanted casting rods. Um, the minute the minnow bait comes out, people want a deep diving bait or people want a, um, a, um, a smaller jointed crank or, you know what I mean? Or people want mm-hmm. resin or people want plastic or people, it just keeps going on and on and on. And, and also, I'm the guy that's always fiddled. So I take sure. a bait, it wouldn't work. Then I'd rebuild it. All of a sudden, I'd start catching fish with it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or add a tail or add a hook or add split rings so that the hook hooks into the tail. Or or i just mod the crap out of the bait. So, so I would always point out stuff missing about the industry or missing in the industry or, or something deeply wrong about a bait. 
And now I'm, I'm in a position to fix it and make that solution available to everyone. Yeah. And uh, I'd like my kids to to get into it too. And you know, it's funny because we, we can either choose not to give to give ourselves expectations, or we can just look five years down the road and realize how much you can accomplish in five years. Muskies is an example. You go from shore fishing to working with the best bait makers in the world, right? And, and and being good friends with the best fishermen in some of the best fishermen in the world, whether it's for muskies or yep. any other uh, uh, fish. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. You start a YouTube channel, you end up being great buddies with some of the best YouTube channels out there for fishing right now, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So uh, we can either choose to look five years down the road. Five years down the road, that's. If, if uh, it's John Danaher that said that there, there's a there's a cha there's a Japanese philosophical principle that says you can choose to waste every opportunity, you can choose to do nothing, you can choose to be if you can choose to watch Friends over and over and over and over and over every afternoon for the rest of your life, or you could choose to learn one more thing every day, and after six months. Well, after 10 years, but after six months of painting, you go from this to this, right? And yeah. people, this, this, what this is, and I keep teasing my wife, this is an accomplished artist. Mm -hmm. My wife kept talking about her neighbors, which we can't stand because they're mean people. <laughs> uh, they're not very nice at all. They're mean to the kids. They're mean to the dog. They're just oh, mean. Man, to, and I sorry. like everybody. I'm buddy. I just want to be best friends with everybody. I want to invite everybody over for some from some brisket, and they won't even come. Right. So, mm, so uh, why was I talking about the neighbors? Oh, I'm like Kyle. I'm looking because <laughs> the neighbors an artist. She's like, oh, they're artists. They're artists. I'm like, bullshit. Anybody can do a painting like that, right? Actually, the guy's quite good at painting. Makes beautiful sceneries. And then I'm like, look at me. They're not the only artists on the street now. And she's like, oh, I guess we got them, right? So jujitsu is the same thing. All, you, you don't have to be a, you don't have to be, you don't have to be a George St. Pierre. First of all, you got to get in there. Second of all, you have to go three times a week for five years. And, and if you're a little bit athletic, in three years, you'll be a fucking killer. In six years, you'll be something else. You'll be something else. Uh, there was a paper article here this week. There's a guy who's in jail. He's got no neck, all muscles everywhere, tattoos everywhere. He was he did the MMA, the professional MMA here locally. He's in jail for um, for threatening someone with a sawzall and trying to collect from him, like he kidnapped somebody. So basically, he's he's like this terrible affiliated criminal. That guy came to the gym. I choked him out three times in five minutes. He walked up to my coach and he said, what the hell is that guy? What, what belt is he? <laughs> and my coach didn't say a fucking word. He goes, oh, he's just, uh, he's just a new purple belt. Yeah, he's, he's an older guy. He's 41 years old. And my coach was like, <laughs> so five years of getting my ass kicked turns into me having a few skills. If only we all understood how how valuable we are and how much uh, potential we have and how much a couple hours a day can turn into something magical. And if we just look five years down the road and see what we could achieve, we, we'd all be in, in hyperdrive. We'd all, you know what I mean? You know how efficient sure. and how, um, but, but, you know, it, it, it's hard work it, and it, it is work. Every day you got to put some time in. It. These baits, I work on these baits till midnight. I start working at eight, work till midnight. If I counted the hours, I'd stop making baits. <laughs> For yeah, sure. We're all in the same boat. Eh? All bait makers in the same boat. We we don't realize, you know, like it's 10, 12, 15, 20 minutes per epoxy coat. We're putting eight coats on the bait. So we've already got like two hours just in epoxy. We haven't painted it. We haven't built it. We haven't bought anything. We haven't. It's uh, but it's fun. And the result is, is, is pretty. The result sure. is satisfying. So do you do so? Do you do barbarian full time, or do you have a job barbarian? Oh, I, I couldn't. Yeah, baits? no, no, I've got a job full time. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I manage auditors. I manage auditors. I'm the. I'm the highest ranking, pension plan, 
audit manager in Canada. I'm the only pension plan manager. <laughs> Canada, there's only one team. Soon there's going to be two teams, and I'm taking the other team. But yeah, there's, there's, yeah, yeah. That, that, the my my mom did uh, taxes when I was a kid and she made me do taxes, help her out. when I was like 13 years old. So I was punching in slips when I was like 13, 14, 15, 16. And then out of university, I started working for a company that, uh, that makes a pension software up, up here and, and uh, uh, a tax software up here and prints the income tax act. Mm -hmm. what, what's the equivalent of the income tax act in the States? It'd probably just be your standard income tax um, that we do every year or whatever. I would yeah, imagine. but the book, the what's the book called? The law. It's got to be something know. close to that, but it wouldn't be the same as the Canadian name. Americans always have a different name. Yeah, I don't know. Federal income tax would be the only thing that I could think of. It, Just your standard federal income tax, and those laws are on the books, but I wouldn't be able to tell you what the books are called. I know what it is. It's just laws. at the tip of my tongue. I don't deal, obviously, I don't deal with uh, with Americans in my day-to-day -day job, right? Yeah, fair enough. I don't yeah, so I'm, uh, yeah, so I'm, the, I'm the equivalent of the IRS. That's that's what my, I am. My students look at me weird when I say A because I hang out with Canadians and Wisconsin and Minnesota people too much. Uh, quick, a, a. Uh, this, <laughs> this guy uh, uh, said uh, what uh, he's got a new reel. Is Barbarian Braid only available on your site or is there any U.S. stores or sites that would carry it? I don't know that off the top of my head. I, the St. Lawrence shop does. If I remember right, St. Lawrence that I shop. So, so guys, I'm glad he asked that question. So, first of all, it's cheaper for me to ship to the U.S. than it is for me to ship to Canada. I don't know why, but the post office now has a serious discount for packages going out to the states. So, um, if you guys um, and and the exchange rates terrible too for us, so it's easy for guys to just buy off the site. Mm -hmm. Guys can reach out to me directly on, on Facebook or Instagram too, and I'll ask them what they want. I'll tell them what I have, and, and I can ship it over. So St. Lawrence Muskie Shop has had braid. I think they're sold out, and I haven't been in touch with uh, Kenny lately. So so I don't think he he's restocked. He's not restocked through me, so I, I, so I doubt he is restocked. And there's a shop in Wisconsin. Damn it. That uh, Dorn's Dorn's, Dorn's Outdoor. That sounds right. Okay, I'm glad yeah. I remembered that. Dor Dorn's Outdoor Pro Shop. Yeah, that's it, it's by Madison, isn't it? That's the one. That, I think that Regan's Regan's the one. Regan's that, connection. Uh, yeah. yeah, Regan's the one that that uh, that dropped my name there. So um, yeah, they have it. I don't know if they ship out or not, but they, they bought a nice little can, uh, variety also. So they, yeah. they had a little bit of everything. Uh, but the easiest way is just to get a hold of me. And when I ship it out, uh, there's no duties. Um, and uh, yeah, and the exchange rate's terrible for us. So you guys get a great deal when you buy brain. <laughs> I, yeah, I'd I mean, like to get into more American stores. I have nothing against it. Uh, I'm not a cold caller. I'm not much of a salesman. Um, so I'm waiting for them to reach out to me. That might never happen, but I'm not worried. I, 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 my goal is not to, my goal is not to sell as much as possible. My goal is to make, make the best stuff. So, and, and that, uh, Right now, I'm selling enough to keep making stuff. See, so every penny I make goes right back into uh, investing into new uh, new gear, all of it. And it's uh, more it, axes and coffee tables for the Musky Odyssey. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that coffee table turns out it's a lot more useful than I thought it would be. <laughs> That's great, man. It just cracks me that's, up. That's that's a funny time. story. So, <laughs> I was making again. I've I've always fiddled, right? I was when I moved here. This is a big house. We had to fill it with furniture, and I couldn't afford to fill it with furniture, so I had to make my own goddamn furniture. I made this table with wood for my wood lot. These were two and a half inch boards that were sawn. It's birch and maple. 
the maple dried in my dad's garage for two years. And then I had it here and it took me a winter to make this table. It's nine feet tall and it's almost four feet wide. It's like 44 inches wide. Beautiful goddamn table. So I started making, I, I had a load of wood that had been sawn. So I had some really thick hardwood that I could work on. That was the rustic look that people liked a few years mm -hmm. back. So I bought all the tools and I started making metal legs. My dad's a welder. So I started welding metal legs uh, and, and I, you have to measure and, and bend, right? Like it, it, it's, it's geometry. It's, it's like building up Legos or whatever. Sure. So, I, so I'm measuring and I'm bending and all of a sudden the height of my, the height of my legs are like nine inches. I'm like, mother, they're supposed to be 16 inches. You're, you should always be sitting. You should always be sitting 19 to 21 inches from the floor. So with a two inch board and a nine inch, nine inch, nine inch uh i'm looking at the legs of the coffee table nine inch legs you're sitting on the floor i'm like god damn it then i'm like what am i gonna do i just spent three hours making these legs i'm like i know i'll find somebody that just dropped the tree and i'll ask him for his log so then all of a sudden i see a thing <laughs> pop up on facebook and it goes uh, come and get the logs they're free right i'm like oh, it's a giant pine tree that'll work I show up there. It's these two flaming gay guys, just flaming. And they're, and I, I show up, I'm like, uh, I was half dressed. It wasn't intentional. That's just how it worked out. Right. <laughs> and when I showed, I'm not stupid. I'm the guy that used to say, hi, my name's Rex and see in the room who's, who's about to giggle and who's getting all, uh, glowy eyes over me. Right. I show up, I step out of the car. Both those guys look at me and their eyes just start shining. I'm not going to lie. It was flattering, but I'm like, I'm like, this is going to be interesting. So then instead of being like all uncomfortable, I'm like, Hey guys, how's it going? I'm like, um, I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm looking for one of these uh, trees and I'm like, I'm clever. I'm like, yeah, I make furniture. I should send you guys pictures of my furniture. Maybe you'll like it. If the guys are artsy at all, they might like my furniture. I end up grabbing one of these logs and throwing it in the back of the truck. And they were just looking at me, right? Watch this guy, half naked guy throwing logs out of the truck. And I left with a couple logs and I let them dry here for, I don't know, another six months. And then I ended up building that. Uh, I used a, a, I used like a you know, 11 inch thick log that I sawed up with the Alaskan sawmill to, to build that coffee table. I hated it because it's just a really cheap piece of round pine log and you're not supposed to make furniture with pine unless you're asking for it to fall apart but if that log was out of maple that'd be a 700 pound well no it'd be a yeah 300 pound 350 400 pound coffee table now it's like a 70 pound coffee table and uh kyla loves it so, so it had to stay in the house i want it to be a seat outside i want it to be a chair outside <laughs> Hey, but now, whatever works, man. Now That's I awesome. stab it weekly so it works out. <laughs> so um, last question, hopes and dreams for 24, fishing-wise, company-wise, tax-wise. <laughs> oh, the, uh, the tax man name now makes, yeah, it makes sense, like, more sense yeah. to me now. Um, yeah. I just thought, it, originally I thought it was like a cool name because like tax man, like this it it's coming collects. to collect, man. It always uh, yeah. collects. The tax but, man uh, always collects. Um, it makes more sense. But that's yeah, I awesome. wanted to call it the tax man for a long time. I, I had uh, like 10 years, eight years ago, I had giant baits and my baits were called tax man and Elvis, right? The tax man collects and uh, Elvis is the king of rock and roll. And Elvis... It's still the king of rock and roll, right? But yeah. right now, Elvis catches sunfish and not all the fish. So until this little sucker, these little prototypes here catch all the fish, you guys don't get to use it. Or you guys don't get to, to get a hold of it. Which is a favor to you guys, right? I'm going to I'm gonna double your, your hookup percentage or double your odds of catching fish. Uh, hopes and dreams. Um, geez, that's a good question. <laughs> At work, I just hope work goes well because uh, a bad employee can really make your life hell at work. I, I, uh, I love my boss. I love my work. I, um, 
I, I love the fact that I'm, I, I might get a position that allows me to make a serious difference. I'm in a position right now to make a serious difference because I'm working with finance to change the law, to, 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 to make sure actual bad guys get what they deserve. Um, and, and, and that's rare. That's very rare. Like the bad guys, nobody likes the, 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 the men north of Richmond, those are the ones I'm getting, right? Mm. And uh, um, yeah, so okay. so yeah, so I'm in a position to do that soon. So like so it. that's very exciting, daunting, but exciting. I have I have never been faced with such meaning in my work. It, my work has always been uh, how do I work to better to better just society and myself and everybody around me, just. Uh, Big picture. Big I picture. will say, I will say, Alex. Now that um, I hang out with you Canadians and talk to you guys more, I do follow more of your inner workings. So hold their feet to the fire, fight the good fight. I'm rooting for yeah, you. yeah. The, the, the when we watch TV, we don't see that anymore. We don't see people taking care of people and neighbors taking care of neighbors and individuals wanting wanting the best for their tribe, their community their country. We don't see that anymore. It's the weirdest thing. But if you ask people, you know, a, a, a large majority of us have that opinion, but then there's a, a small minority screaming or controlling or abusing, making us think that we're not the majority, but we are, we, we are, it's our nature. Anyway, so work-wise, yeah, that'll take care of itself because I've got, uh, I get 40 hours a week to do this more like 50 hours a week, but anyways, <laughs> uh, barbarian. I would love to nail the Elvis that like Elvis has potential beyond, beyond what people know. Like, I don't even want to, I could have kept it for myself. I've been told, keep that bait for yourself. But anyways, so I'd like what to get, I've seen. It looks good. So. I'd like to get Elvis nailed. Um, I hope I can satisfy guys with some new weird stuff with the customs. Uh, I've got one other custom that's going to come out. That'll be something special. That probably means it'll cut my tax man time in half, but it doesn't matter. Um, if you want it, you will, if, if, if you build it, they will come. Sure. Um, there will be more rods because more rods are needed. And fish wise, I'd love to, I'd love to nail another pattern. I, I love, I, I'd love to spend a week and just figure them right out at that time of year in that body of water with those baits sure. and just bring my son there next year and put him on a fish or bring a, my dad there or best friend there or visitor there. I'd love to add a pattern to the list. If I add a, to be honest, if I add a pattern to the list every season, I'm a satisfied cookie. If I add a great big fish to the season, I'm a very satisfied cookie. I would like to get my great big fish before the end of the season. That makes for a rough season. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I guess so. And uh, yes. I will be working on uh, on a, a rod holder too. Oh, very cool. But yeah, that's that's I, I, I think I'm putting a lot on my shoulders. I think I – think, uh, <laughs> One day and one step at a time, man. Yeah, it, it, it yeah, yeah. That's so what I told Barry. He's fishing he's wise, and I got. I don't have now. a fifty-five yet. I need a fifty-five. I need a fifty-pounder. Fifty-pounder okay. might take a long time because they close the winter season now in Quebec. So mm -hmm. that means, well, the fish are big. That means I'm going to have to catch my fifty-pounder in in December, late November, December. And that 55 incher, that's any time of the year. And uh, mm -hmm. 55, 56, 57. I just gotta put the time in. Oh, that's that's dream. Yeah, you said hopes and dreams. It's it's a hope and a hey, dream. Hey, yeah. that's that's what I asked. It's for. it's not yeah, a guarantee. I, it's it's a hope and a dream. That's what I told Barry. He already got a really big bite this season. It might be a long rest of the season when you get your or, when you get a big bite like that in March. It might or be his best season ever too. Yeah, get another. What, what about you, Matt? Do you have uh, you have some goals for for uh, 2024? I don't know. I guess uh, probably just 
trying to do my best to keep fighting the good fight and, and bring a name and, and some attention to some of these bait makers and smaller businesses and guides um, that maybe don't have the attention that they deserve and hopefully keep keep bringing that attention their way with, I, I hate to use the word platform, but with whatever platform that I have and whatever influence that I can lend to them, um, I think uh, that's definitely something that I want to keep doing. Um, I, I want to get out on the water as much as possible and, and just fish with good dudes. Uh, that's been an easy thing to do the last couple of years. I've been very fortunate to fish and make connections with awesome guys literally all over North America at this point, which is just absolutely crazy. You know, some of the connections that social media has opened up, it's been phenomenal. And like, like last year was just such a fun season to explore and to do things. I really really want to get back to Canada and fish this year. I've got some personal life things that I've got to make sure that I've got figured out before that can happen. But then once that scheduling stuff is figured out, then I'm hoping that I can make the moves and get back up there at least for like a week. What does your wife do? What's her schedule like? She works from home as well. She, she was an auditor. She just took a new position with uh with a prescription company down here um and she she does kind of like it's kind of like the same thing with the auditing type situation just a different like role with that um so yeah um hopefully get back to wisconsin that's kind of up in the air too just because um callie my brother-in-law callie's brother him and his wife are are due right around the fourth of july so that will be uh a little bit of a sticky wicket to navigate just family wise and where attention will be at that time. Cause it's, yeah, the, the cabin will be a second priority and, and those kinds of things. So it's very exciting, very cool, but it just, there's a lot of variables throughout the summer that will make things a little bit more complicated and uh, scheduling will be, will be more uh, uh, difficult at times than it would have been in previous years, which is okay. It's part of life. It gets more complicated generally as you age. It'd be, I really hope, uh, this year, like Willow is getting old enough now that like she loves fish and knows what fish are and she loves water and swimming and all of these things. So like to get her either in the boat or in the pontoon or something like that. She's still a toddler though, right? She's two and a bit. Yeah. She'll, she'll, she'll turn two in like, just a little less than a month. But Wes, I boated muskies with Wes. I boated three muskies with Wes before he was two years old. Perfect. Yeah, and then, I mean. And then he, at two years old, they're too courageous. So in the boat, yeah. it becomes scary. But yeah. it doesn't mean you can't have her with a vest on. And there is vest for toddlers. Um, oh, yeah. It doesn't yeah, she mean would you always can't have, one have her the vest on. And, and you can, you know, strap her to you or something like that. Make sure your boat's nice and safe. So, it's a it's a very cool age, yeah. Yeah, that would be one of the biggest goals: get her in the boat or fish or whatever. Oh, I mean, uh, she, she's big into it. Get her a, an ice rod and a little reel, <laughs> and yeah. uh, uh, cast out uh, just a ball bearing or whatever, or, or a nut. Cast out a nut in the house. I don't know if your floors can take it. Maybe something less damaging to the floors, and let her reel it in. Oh, sure. cast it out reel it and cast it you'll she'll get really good at reeling in even at that age yeah yeah we'll have to do that that's a, that's a great idea yeah. i appreciate that yeah well dude uh my phone is about to die i greatly appreciate you coming on this has been an absolute blast of a conversation i hope the people who watched enjoyed it as much as i did honestly i don't really care if they did i had a good time so <laughs> I, had a great I appreciate time too, it Matt. i had a great time <laughs> i appreciate it just talking to you and, and catching the vibe of of uh the north uh, east i guess the northeast in canada that's just uh yeah it's so different where you guys are at than it is here so i greatly appreciate the perspective the line the lessons all the things got all the stuff answered man thank you so much and i uh, immensely appreciate uh, the time you put in with the gear and uh, the exposure you give me my friend your no timing's problem, impeccable kyla's going to work <laughs> she's a nurse and the baby's up so I got to put right. the baby to bed. Your timing's impeccable. All right. Sounds good, man. Take care. I will talk to you soon. Have a great night. Later, dude. Yeah.